Welcome to DVT. This is for the Family Medicine MS3 Clerkship. We're going to go over the basics of two-point compression ultrasound for DVT at the bedside, as well as look at a few examples. The two compression study involves identifying the common femoral vein, as well as the junction of the common femoral vein with the greater saphenous vein and the bifurcation of the common femoral vein. The other vessel you need to identify is the popliteal vein and the popliteal fossa. The basic question you're asking is does the vein compress completely? So do the two walls of the vessel come together? If they do come together, then there is no DVT and this is a negative study. If the vessel does not compress completely, then there is a DVT present and this is a positive study. Now only one of the vessels needs not compress for it to be a positive study. Now here is an example of the common femoral vessels by ultrasound. This is where the greater saphenous is joining the common femoral vein and we can see the femoral artery. This triad is often said to resemble a Mickey Mouse head. Here we can see the greater saphenous in green, the common femoral vein in blue, and the femoral artery in red. Next, we're going to look at the popliteal vein and the popliteal fossa. All deep veins run next to arteries, which is a clue to knowing that you're looking at the right vessel. It's easy to accidentally look at the superficial vessels and see the veins compressing, thinking that you have a negative study. However, the superficial veins do not run next to arteries, so that's a good clue that you're looking at the right vessel as if you see an artery. So in this example, we can see the popliteal vein sitting on top of the popliteal artery, and it is completely compressing. Now here's our case. We have a 25-year-old female. She's coming in complaining of some left leg swelling. She has a little bit of calf tenderness. Um, otherwise, no shortness of breath, no fevers, no past medical history. She is on birth control pills. So a physical exam just shows a swollen left leg with some calf, tender not, calf tenderness, otherwise normal exam. Now here's your bedside ultrasound that you've just performed. On the left are the femoral vessels and on the right are the popliteal vessels. As you can see on the left, the common femoral vein is not compressing and on the right, the popliteal vein is not compressing. So this patient has a DVT. Now you're asking yourself, why would I do this at the bedside? Well, this is going to completely change your management of the patient. If you did this and the study was negative, you would be able to send this patient home. However, with a positive study, you're going to need to admit them to the hospital, start them on heparin or Lovenox, and bridge them over to Coumadin. Here are some pearls and pitfalls when completing a DVT study. First, you want to make sure that you are identifying deep veins. So deep veins are next to arteries like we saw in that previous popliteal example. And superficial vessels can often be mistaken for, for the deep veins. So you need to make sure that you're looking at a vessel next to an artery. Lymph nodes can also be mistaken for a DVT. Now oftentimes you will see a clot present when you're doing the study. When the clot's present, the vessel is not going to compress. In order to tell a lymph node apart from a clot in a vein, if you scan more proximal or distal, your lymph node is going to go out of view. Whereas if you scan up and down on the vein, while the clot may disappear, you will still be tracing the vein. So here on the right, the arrows are pointing to a lymph node, and then you can see below the femoral artery and the femoral vein. So another pitfall, I'm going to let you look at this study for a second. Now if you can see here, they are looking at the wrong vessel. So they are focusing in on a superficial vein, which is completely compressing and most likely calling this study negative. However, they should be focused a little lower where you can see the femoral artery and vein, the larger, deeper vessels, 
which we're looking at for the study. So here's another case. Give you a second to look at this and tell me what you think. So we can see on the left that the common femoral vein is not compressing, while on the right the popliteal vein is completely compressing. So this again is positive for a DVT. And one more case. So here we can see the common femoral vein just before its bifurcation, and we can see that it is completely compressing there on the left, whereas the popliteal vein on the right is not compressing. So again, this is positive for a DVT. So in summary, you can see that this is a quick, low-cost, and accurate way to diagnose a DVT at the bedside, which can change your management of a patient. You want to make sure to identify the correct vessels, including the common femoral vein where it bifurcates and its junction with the greater saphenous vein, as well as the popliteal vein in the popliteal fossa. The basic question is, does the vessel compress all the way? If yes, then there's no DVT. If the vessel does not compress, then there is a DVT present. Thank you.